Welcome back to another episode of DFIR in 120 seconds. Today we start the Evidence of Execution series with the Application Compatibility or Shim Cache. Microsoft updates Windows very frequently. They still want to maintain downward compatibility as much as they can without requiring developers to change their code with every update of the OS. Thus Microsoft introduced the Application Experience and Compatibility feature to offer an additional abstraction layer between applications and the Windows API. First we need to understand how API calls work. When an application wants to leverage functionality exposed by the Windows API, your application will use something called Import Address Table, in short IAT, to tell the operating system which API functionality it plans to use. So here's an example. Our program hello.exe leverages functionality comdlg32.dll exposes. The IAT then points the code to the right location of the API in the US. Now with the shim cache in place, Windows redirects those calls to an alternative code depending on the chosen compatibility mode. The chain then gets another link and looks like this. In fact, it's very similar to API hooking certain malware samples may use. Now that you understand the purpose of shim cache, we can start looking at its forensic value. The shim data is stored in the registry. Microsoft changed the sort of information it holds and the format very frequently, so please see the link web pages in the description for more detailed information. On Windows Vista and newer, the shim cache stores up to 1024 entries. It will discard the oldest one when the list is full. The minimum information we get out of an entry on all Windows OS is a timestamp and the full file path. That's where it becomes tricky. The timestamp is not the timestamp of the execution of the file, but the last modification timestamp for the file stored in the file system. Windows uses that to check if the contents of an executable have been changed and thus require a new compatibility evaluation. The second issue is that even if a file shows in the shim cache, it does not necessarily mean that it has been executed. Windows will also add files in actively browsed directories automatically without them being executed. So the key takeaways for this episode are ChimCache gives you a list of up to 1024 executables on the system even after they have been deleted. The stored timestamp does not point you at the time of execution, it's still valuable as it will give you a modification date or even a modification timeline for a file. Microsoft changes the format frequently which makes it difficult for tool developers to catch up. Thanks for watching and see you next time with part 2 of Evidence of Execution, User Assist.